education, thought leaders. You got to interact, you got to kind of know them and then uh, learn from them. And would you be ready to help in a medical crisis? Up next, the very latest from the anesthesiology annual meeting. Welcome to ASA TV, I'm Ed Hyland. Physician anesthesiologists come here to stay ahead of the curve. You can take advantage of the best educational opportunities and find the very latest in technology. This session on emerging technology examined how smart monitors, nanotechnology, and big data can help save lives. For example, patient deterioration is often not spotted in time because of a monitoring gap. But a pilot project in Europe called Nightingale can dramatically improve perioperative safety. One of the concerns of both nurses and patients is that wireless remote monitoring will lead to less nurses or that they will not see a nurse. And uh, well, we'll design the system in such a way that the nurse inputs are very important. But they will not be taking the vital signs themselves. The, the patches will do that automatically, continuously. But the nurses will be able to tell us what, how the patient looks, whether they're concerned. The American Society of Anesthesiologists is putting focus on brain health. In a panel discussion, the experts addressed when you should be concerned and what you should do as a result. One of the most urgent challenges we're facing is critical drug shortages of high concern, injectable opioids and local anesthetics. Industry leaders are voicing their concerns to the FDA, DEA, Congress, healthcare stakeholders and manufacturers. I think the most important thing is that in the 2010 census, uh, nearly 60 million people or over 19% of the U.S. population actually lived in these rural centers. Our patients living in rural areas may not find all they need at their local hospital. That's especially true for anesthesia care. Right now, industry leaders are working with their local and federal governments to improve rural practice. You can help lead the change. Visit the ASA Resource Center to get your questions answered, find out about education, and meet the staff. Hurricanes, wildfires, or heaven forbid, a mass shooting. Now, this is only a drill, but it's a very realistic interpretation of what can happen when physician anesthesiologists are cast in the role of first responders. Oh my God, all these people laying here. This area for anybody that can walk. Anesthesiologists are excellent physicians taking care of single patients at a time, but we have a skills gap because we're not used to doing uh, multiple patients in awkward scenarios such as in the emergency room or in the field. More than medical skills are needed as the participants are tested at every stage in this disaster demonstration. This actor patient had fatal injuries and a hidden bomb. I mean, ideally, one would clear the area. 100%, yeah, so we're not going to do it just yet, but you would clear the area, clear yourself. Anybody that can walk, you would want to tell them to clear the area as well. Anybody who can't walk on their own, they stay behind in the scene. Once the scene is cleared, then you can return and continue your assessment. So she is a tag of black, but she is an immediate risk to you. This is organized chaos. What we expect is we take people and we put them right into the field, and then we allow a natural leader to emerge, and we hope that that happens. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a lot more chaotic when a leader doesn't emerge. But here, failure is a learning experience. Understanding patient needs can be just as critical as treating patient injury. Academic departments play a key role in the development of physician anesthesiologists. A panel discussion led to the exchange of ideas in advancing leadership in the industry, focusing on advocacy, membership, and inclusion. These are doctors who have elected to go in a different corridor, and that's really good. But when you're talking about health care, and when you're talking about limiting resources, and when you're talking about scarcity, we need physicians who are at the table who actually touch patients. Several researchers gathered to discuss the risks of anesthesia after surgery. This panel provided updates and gave guidance on how to talk to patients. It's a very timely topic. Um, you know, I you, we train at the cardiac anesthesiologist. I use it to research involving the heart. But now with the advance of anesthesia surgery, you know, heart problem after surgery is actually quite rare. 
but um, problem facing the brain, memory, thinking you know, impairment is a very prevalent condition. We're presenting data in front of the NIH program director, so she will know what's going on during ASA, during anesthesia society, the research in this area, you know, anesthesia neurotoxicity, POCD or POD. On the other hand, we also have a chance to exchange among ourselves regarding the updated and uh, the progress in this field. Make sure you're using the My ASA app to get the most out of your time here in San Francisco. You can create your own schedule and be sure to check the virtual event bag for special invitations. For now, I'm Ed Highland, ASA TV.